Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski-Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha conquers snow. And by FXR Racing, full throttle addiction. 2018 is going to be an exciting year for the crossover class. Last season, Polaris absolutely nailed the category with the Switchback Assault that had both on and off trail riders equally as excited. But let's be real here. Skidoo is never one to let the grass grow under their feet in this industry, and they have unsurprisingly responded with a new crossover of their own. The Backcountry X isn't a new model, but rather a new version of a model Skidoo discontinued a few seasons ago. Now, Skidoo doesn't make a lot of mistakes in this industry, but most people agree dropping the original Backcountry X was one. So inevitably, people are going to wonder, does the new Backcountry X850 surpass the Switchback Assault 800 in its ability to bridge the gap between on and off trail capability in a single sled? Not to burst your bubble, but you're going to have to wait until the end of this shootout to find out. Deciding what a crossover actually is, is paramount in deciding which crossover sled is the best. If you don't know where the target you're shooting for is located, it's pretty hard to hit a bullseye. So what is a crossover? Well, for starters, it's a term that's been so loosely used over the past decade, it's lost pretty much all of its meaning. I mean, seriously, how can a Yamaha Apex XTX and an Arctic Cat High Country both be crossovers? Just because they have a longer track does not mean they fit the bill. No, I prefer a much more specific definition. In my opinion, a crossover is a sled that is as good on the trail as it is off. It can't be heavily biased to one versus the other. It has to be legitimate on both fronts. It also can't simply be a mountain sled with a wide front end any more than it can be a trail sled with a longer track. A crossover is greater than the sum of its parts. The way I look at it, a crossover sled has to be one that you can hand to an on-trail rider and have them come away with excellent things to say, and then immediately take it and hand it to an off-trail rider and have them come away with equal praise. Very few, in fact almost no sleds have hit this mark since the crossover class was created. Last season, Polaris' Switchback Assault absolutely nailed it. Now let's find out how the Backcountry X measures up. The Switchback Assault is completely unchanged in 2018, which is good because absolutely no changes were needed from the 2017 model. It's based on Polaris' Axis front end and utilizes both trail width and geometry. Out back you'll find a solid tunnel that houses a 144 inch skid that was new last season. Polaris has labeled it the IGX 144. You can order your Assault with either a 1.375 or a 2 inch lug sneaker. Engine options are either a 6 or 800 clean fire, the latter is what we're dealing with today, and there aren't really any sub-models of this sled. You pick your engine, you pick your track, you pick your accessories, and you have your very own Assault. In the other corner is the new kit on the block, Skidoo's Backcountry X850. It's based on Skidoo's G4 platform and obviously houses their more than impressive 850 E-Tech power plant. The front end of the Backcountry X is a special setup that's not found on any other sled in Skidoo's 2018 lineup. It's called the RAS-3. The RAS-3 is based on the front end found on Skidoo's Summit models and utilizes A-arms similar to a Summit, but spindles similar to an MXZ to improve on-trail stability and handling. Outback is an all-new 146-inch skid Skidoo is calling the C-Motion. It's wrapped in a 16-inch wide by 2-inch lug sneaker. C-Motion is said to combine the best traits of T-Motion for off-trail and the best traits of R-Motion for on-trail. To make this shootout easier to follow and the results easier to understand, we're going to break our evaluation into eight categories. The sled that wins the most wins the shootout. The categories are on-trail ride, on-trail handling, off-trail ride, off-trail handling, power and drivetrain, ergonomics, features, and fit and finish. Let's jump into our first category on-trail ride and see who comes out on top. If there's one thing everyone here at Snow Tracks is convinced of, it's that the Switchback Assault is a great riding snowmobile. After a full season on the snow and nearly 2,000 miles on the odometer, there's no question, it rides great when the trails are rough. The Axis front end here rides like any other Axis front end. That is, it provides the best front end ride in the business, if only by a small margin this season. Out back, that IGX-144 would feel right at home in a trail-specific sled. It soaks up little stuff, big stuff, and anything in between, and thanks to a full set of adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks, 
you can tune it to your liking. The backcountry's front end, with its mix of on- and off-trail components, rides surprisingly well. Our past experiences with crossover sleds that utilize front-end parts from a mountain sled have not been good. But this one is different and better. Outback, the new C-Motion skid does a great job of smoothing out rough spots no matter how bad they get. We like that it's uncoupled and therefore transfers its weight. Is the suspension setup on the backcountry as good on the trail as the Assault? No. It's close, but pretty much everybody who went back and forth between the two agrees, the Assault is just that much better. So score one point for the Polaris. On-trail handling may be one of the most important categories in this shootout. It's proven to have more of an effect on a rider's overall opinion of a crossover than any other single aspect of a sled. Again, Polaris is using a trail front end that we think may just be the best handling front end in the business, and it's no different here on the Assault. Handling is predictable, stable, and precise. A hint of inside ski lift sets the outside ski into the snow and around you go, no matter the conditions. It probably won't come as a surprise to most of you that the RAS-3, being a hybrid, doesn't handle as well on the trail as a dedicated trail front end. It's good, and we have to admit, we were pleasantly surprised and impressed with how this sled handles. But if you handed this sled to a dedicated trail rider, they would immediately notice the initial understeer on corner entry and be able to tell it was a crossover. So again, the Switchback Assault takes the on-trail handling category. Now, if you'd looked at the specs of both these sleds, I would imagine that didn't come as a big surprise. Now let's move into off-trail ride. When it comes to off-trail ride, both of these sleds ride very well. In fact, we really have no complaints about either when the snow is deep, but simple physics reveals when the ground gets harder, an adjustable set of shocks is going to give you the ability to tune the ride of the sled more precisely. The Polaris's adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks. That's why it wins this category. Not because the Backcountry X rides bad. Simply put, the Assault can be set up to ride better. So, point three for Polaris. Off-trail handling was an interesting category to evaluate. Handling is a very personal thing, but off-trail, there are geometrical forces at play here that can't be ignored. The very same trail width front end that scored the win for the Assault earlier on is responsible for the loss in this category. Now that doesn't mean the Assault handles bad off-trail by any means. In fact, for a trail width front end, it's downright impressive off-trail, but the narrower RAS-3 front end of the backcountry makes for an easier sled to maneuver in deep snow and more settled sled when encountering rough patches under the powder on the side of a hill. Clearly, the Backcountry X scores the point in off-trail handling. Now let's look at power and drivetrain. Polaris's Clean Fire 800 is a beast of a motor. Its light crank allows it to rev lightning fast and buttery smooth power starts way down low and lasts till the very top. Clutching here is excellent as well, but the honest truth is simply this. Skidoo's 850 E-Tech and P-Drive primary are just better. The 850 runs cleaner, pulls harder, and back shifts faster than the clean fire. There's nothing bad about the Switchback's powertrain, but everything about the back countries is better Point two for Skidoo. This next category is a bit of a two-part. Ergonomics could be evaluated both on and off trail separately, but because these sleds are designed to do both, we've decided to combine them. When it comes to ergonomics, you do have to ride both sleds back to back to compare them, but you also have to give yourself adequate time on each to become accustomed to them. Jumping on a Skidoo from a Polaris and saying you don't like the ergos, that's just not fair. On trail, the majority of our crew prefers the ergonomics of the switchback. The bars are just a little bit wider, the seat's just a little bit better shape and angle, and the floorboards are just that much more comfortable. Off trail, our crew still favors the Polaris, but not by nearly the same margin. The forward positioning of the Skidoo takes some getting used to, but it can be a real benefit when it's deep. When it's all said and done, the ergonomics of the Switchback are simply more pleasing in more scenarios to a wider range of people than the Backcountry X. Again, neither of these sleds are bad. The Polaris is simply that much better. Next, let's look at fit and finish. Now, we're not going to focus on value, but the fact that both of these sleds are extremely high budget rides suggests that anyone who buys one is going to expect the highest level of quality. And it's here that the Skidoo really shines. We've said it dozens of times over the past seven or eight years. Skidoo's overall quality of fit and finish is unrivaled in this industry. 
The same holds true here in the crossover class. Polaris has taken huge leaps forward over the past few seasons, and new Polaris sleds are the best built and best finished Polaris sleds in history. But the Skidoo is simply better. Now that puts our points tally at four for the Polaris and three for the Skidoo. The last category we're gonna look at is features. What do you actually get for your money when you buy either of these top of the line crossover sleds? When you spec them to the max, the Skidoo comes with a 16 wide track with a two inch paddle, a decent gauge package, a front mounted storage compartment, mountain bar, electric start, and hand guards. The Polaris, when fully spec, comes with a 15 wide by two inch track, a full color GPS enabled gauge, storage compartment up front, rear storage bag, adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks, electric start, and pro taper handlebars. Hand guards and a mountain bar are missing. It's not hard to see that in the features department, the Polaris comes out on top. The truth is, just its high end shock package would be enough for it to win this category. With that last point, Polaris comes out on top with a total of five points to the Skidoo's three. But before we go, let's take a second to put all of this into perspective. What makes the Polaris Switchback Assault the ultimate crossover sled? Why did it win this shootout? I'm guessing there's a large group of people out there who will likely suggest it's because Polaris paid us more, which is laughable. The results of this shootout have nothing to do with dollar figures or any bias on our part. The results of this shootout simply illustrate the truth about the crossover market and what makes a great crossover sled. Sleds under the crossover label that are biased to one discipline of riding over the other have been around for a long time. But what we think sets the Switchback Assault apart from the rest, what gives it the edge and the reason it won here today, it's not a 50-50 sled. It doesn't just do well on and off trail. It does amazing both on and off the trail. If we had to put a number to it, we'd probably say this is a 100-100 split sled. Equally as good on as it is off, but also equally as good as other on-trail sleds as it is to other off-trail sleds. That's the winning formula, and it's not a secret. It's not patented. Anyone can do it and give Polaris a run for their money. The question is, who will it be? Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. For some, buying a two-up sled can be like suggesting buying a minivan. But if you've got kids or a significant other who like to come along for a ride occasionally, you might need to trade the cool sled in. Said no guy ever, or buy a two-up seat kit. But most of the two-up seat options either leave behind ugly mounting brackets or require a complete new seat and structure that makes the upgrade significantly costly, but thankfully, there are options. Kimpex makes a product called the Seat Jack that mounts to just about any new sled. It doesn't leave behind any ugly bracketry, and it's also very reasonably priced. Using sled-specific mounting kits, the Seat Jack leaves behind only two small round mounts, both front and rear, about the size of a nickel on the tunnel. They're minimal and don't distract from your cool ride. In today's case, a brand new Axis XCR Switchback, a sled most folks wouldn't think about being too up capable. The seat jack is rated for up to 225 pounds and can be specced out with optional features just like two up sleds. From optional RCA outputs for a heated shield to the adjustable lumbar support and the three stage adjustable height hand grips with built in wind deflectors, as well as heated grips, the seat jack has it all and has been ergonomically designed with the passenger in mind yet allows your cool one-up sled to stay, well, still cool on the days you're not riding two up. And because of its easy to install design, you can literally remove it in seconds. While we're talking about seats, the stock seat material from most manufacturers can be, well, a little bit slippery, and it might cause you to move around a little bit more than you'd like to when you add in some snow dust. From my snowcross days, I really appreciate a good grippy seat material and the Skins Protective Gear non-skid seat cover is available for all brands. Installation requires a good stapler, some alignment and stretching of material to ensure a tight fit. The finished product looks great, but more importantly, it's gonna keep your hind end planted precisely where you want it, corner after corner, bump after bump. And when I'm riding with the crew racking on miles, it's nice to know that they're actually keeping up behind me. The Universal Fit F1 mirrors from Kimpex are sleek and stylish. They have a super bike look to them, and while past big bulky mirrors were nothing I'd put on my sled, having a pair of F1s really helps me to keep an eye on the rest of the group. They install easily, are shock resistant, and they have an adjustable base to get the right angle every time. 
I love upgrading stuff. It doesn't really matter what it is, but when I upgrade, I wanna add functionality. And I feel like I've done just that today, while at the same time, keeping your cool sled still cool. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Last season, we tested the RMK 174 3 inch, and it truly was the Rocky Mountain King. We shot it out against the 174 Summit XM, and it took the win. But for 2018, is the 174 RMK still the king of the long track, deep lug mountain sleds? For 2018, not a lot has changed with the 174. In fact, it's pretty much just graphics and coloration. But the coloration of this sled sure will turn a lot of heads. The orange and black is really nice. Polaris has stepped out into a leading position when it comes to paint and graphics, and this sled I'm testing today is a Snowcheck Select version with the three inch track. It features orange panels, orange tunnel, and black rails and spindles, and may quite possibly be my favorite coloration of all time when it comes to Polaris snowmobiles. It's not a good looking sled, it is a great looking sled. With the 174, it's more than just track length and lug depth. It's about being able to take this snowmobile higher and farther with more confidence, and that's precisely what you can do. Polaris's RMKs are like precision instruments in the hands of snow surgeons. When you get behind the bars of an RMK, you're gonna feel how good it fits your standing position. You'll notice the powder track running boards and the immense space to move your feet along with the minimal amount of aluminum and maximum clear out area. This is a climber's sled. It's built to go where others won't and get there easier. It's an RMK, and that means so much more than just being a Polaris. Under the hood, the 800HL motor is still a force to be reckoned with. No matter the CC advantages of its competitors, there is still a lot of technology under this hood. With over 100,000 testing miles on this motor design, the power plant is proven. It's been propelling RMKs, rushes, and switchbacks for years, and truly delivers impressive lift. Much of this can be directly linked to the 2.5 pound reduced crankshaft that results in 25% less inertia over the previous 800. Add to this three-stage electronic exhaust valves that react instantly, along with grooved pistons that help to pull that oil up from the electronic oil pump, and you've got power, response, and durability. Sure, it's got V-Force reeds and a high flow intake and exhaust, but what about the actual potential of this sled? I mean, how does it actually handle the steep and the deep? With complete and total reckless abandon, the 174-inch Series 7 3.0 track is an absolute beast in a single-ply design with center relief cutouts to help reduce weight overall. Now, the 3.0 is a big lug to be toting on the hill, but truth is, it's still very solid in low snow conditions and will continue to propel you no matter what it's able to grab. One of my favorite parts about the RMKs is the ability to stick them to a side of a hill. This is due to both the RMK DNA as well as the Axis chassis, and other things that help are the rear suspension and quite possibly something you might not always think about. The yoga pants tight bodywork. I mean, yes, it's a great looking sled with a very stylized design, but more than just the style, the bumps, angles, and incredibly tight to the chassis and motor panels are not just for looks. They keep the RMK from paneling out while also helping it to stick to the line you've set it on and continue to propel itself forwards and up and quite surprisingly also keeps the rear end from trenching and dropping out. A common problem when you choose to go from a side hill straight line to an increasing uphill cut. Along with the body panels, the riding position of the axis has a lot to do with how well it responds to your riding input. The seated and standing position are exceptional, but when you're standing wrong foot forward, holding a side hill that's make it or break it, the feel of the pro taper bars in your hands and the open space to get your feet where they need to truly be makes this sled an incredible mountain climber. There's been a lot of time and testing put into the ergonomics of this sled and how it responds to your riding position when it's on its side. While it may take slightly more effort to get planted on a side hill than its competition, once it's set, it's there to stay and you can make minor adjustments with nothing more than a re-anchor of your foot and a shift of your body weight. Along with impressive responsiveness, the 74 RMK has some impressive features that truly set it apart and in many ways raise the bar from its competition. LED headlights that are the brightest in the industry, LED taillight, pro taper bars, the option of the Polaris interactive gauge with GPS, forged A-arms, and what may be one of the most valuable included suspension features, Walker Evans compression adjustable piggyback shocks on the rear arm as well as the front end. 
The ability to change your compression and suspension responsiveness is a very important feature Polaris continues to keep. Even though it adds minimal weight, I think it's the absolute right choice and it adds real world value to this already incredible sled. With the long track 174 inch landscape changing quite a bit this season, there's no doubt quite a few wondering whether the RMK is still king of the castle. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, see endless possibilities, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Art to Cat, share our passion. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.